Helms, we make Coronet look hip and exciting. The Spinal Column, X versus Sever, Structure and Function in Man. Danny Elfman's been phoning it in lately. Oh, there's no need to linger here. Dude's got a pelvis in his back. Uh-oh, content warning for the kid from Overcoming Fear. I could do that, I just don't want to. Man's marvelous body is constructed for strength, as well as for free and graceful movement. Sometimes, sure. This freedom of movement depends upon intricate systems of bones, muscles, and nerves. And a delicate cocktail of drugs and hormones. This film is primarily concerned with one part of the bony framework of the body, the spinal, or vertebral column. Welcome to Spirit Halloween! This is the spinal column, consisting of 33 bones. With a free pelvis as our gift to you. The upper part of the spinal column is joined to the base of the skull. It is joined in a way that gives firm but flexible support. Not available in Ted Cruz. In this unusual x-ray photograph, you can see these parts of the body in action. It's rather unsettling. Yep. Lower down, the bones of the spinal column serve as the rear supports for the ribs and their attachments. Together with the ribs, this column also helps to support the shoulder girdle. Shoulder girdle? At its base, the spinal column is firmly connected with the bones of the pelvis. This supports the upper parts of the body and forms the upper connections of the lower limbs. A very important function of the spinal column as a whole is to provide a well-protected path for the spinal cord. I hate escort missions. The cord is the extension of the central nervous system from the brain. While the average spinal canal is about 27 inches long... But who's counting, really? The spinal cord averages only about 17 or 18 inches. A pair of spinal nerves appear between each vertebral arc. These become inflamed and aggravated the moment you turn 40. The fully developed spinal column usually consists of 33 bones. Each of these bones is called a vertebra. Cool story, vertebra. Bra. This shows how the assembled spine is positioned in the body. Neat. This is the spinal column in a reclining position. Ah. Note the location of the pelvis or hip bone. Oh, that's okay. There are four major curvatures in the spinal column. There is a convex or forward curvature in the cervical region. At your cervix! And another in the lumbar region. Oh, they have the best apple butter there. There is a concave or backward curvature in the thoracic region. Thoracic park! And another in the sacrococcygeal region. The less said about that one, the better. Wedge-shaped discs of connective tissue help hold the vertebrae apart. The shape of these wedges account for the curvatures in the spine. The wedge-shaped discs of cartilage and the curvatures give elasticity to a person's movements and help absorb shocks. Henry, I'm leaving you. Openings between the base of the arches of the vertebrae provide entrances and exits for the nerves of the spinal cord and for the associated blood vessels. Wow, they thought of everything. From most vertebrae project small extensions of bone, which form joints with similar extensions of the vertebrae above and below it. Uh, there are too many specialized Lego pieces these days. When I was a kid, it was just bricks. Other more prominent extensions extend backward and to the sides to form spines to which muscles and ligaments are attached. Use only genuine spinal replacement parts. These form joints, which aid movements of the trunk and prevent the individual vertebra from slipping forward or backward. This is all amazing, but I still can't reach my remote. There are differences as well as similarities among the different vertebrae. For example, the first two cervical vertebrae are unlike any of the others. They're made out of rubber and smell like vanilla. This one is called the Atlas because it supports the head, as the mythological Atlas was thought to support the world on his shoulders. Hey, stop trying to teach me extra things. It lacks body and spine and has two large surfaces on which the skull can rock. Are your skulls ready to rock? The x-ray picture shows the action. Uh, you showed this earlier, and I believe I called it unsettling. Yep. The second vertebra is called the axis. It has a bony part that serves as a pivot of rotation for the atlas on the axis. The atlas on the axis provides access to the abscess. 
The remaining cervical vertebrae are quite similar, except for the long spine of the seventh vertebra. I don't know, number six ain't doing so bad either. The position of this vertebra may be easily seen when the head is bent forward. Submit. Taken together, these seven cervical vertebrae in the spinal column help provide freedom of movement for the head and to cushion the head from shock. Guys, this x-ray footage was expensive and we gotta justify the cost or our producer will be angry. In the thoracic region, there are 12 vertebrae. Each of these 12 vertebrae is somewhat larger than those of the cervical region. You don't say. These vertebrae serve as points of anchorage for the ribs. They permit the slight movement of the heads of the ribs that is required in breathing. Sounds important. We removed the rib cage to show the location of the kidneys. Those are potatoes. Stomach. A.K.A. the tummy. Liver. This is making me hungry. Heart. Not available in Ted Cruz. And lung. Singular? This is how the ribs form a protective housing for them. And with the five lumbar vertebrae, these bony structures form a partial protection for much of the intestinal tract. Ooh, zombie lunchables. The lumbar vertebrae are larger and stronger than those above. Being lower, they are subjected to greater weight bearing and strain. They look like marshmallows in the middle of mutating. The lowest lumbar vertebra is joined with the sacrum. Oh, man. The sacrum, in turn, is joined to the bones of the pelvic area and forms a protection for the intestines, the bladder, and the reproductive organs. Oh, you mean the junk? The human body... I'm listening. ...is a group of interrelated machines with the spinal column as their axis. Rise of the machines. Good posture means that the body is held erect so that the body mechanisms function normally while position and balance are maintained with a minimum of muscle strain. Under these conditions, none of the curves of the spinal column is exaggerated. Well, why not? That's no fun. Slender and rapidly growing children often have postural trouble. I feel you, buddy. Two procedures may help remedy this condition. One is the use of food such as milk, which helps build stronger bones and muscles. Citation needed. The other is to make certain one gets plenty of rest. That's your procedures? Bad body mechanics may be the result of stooping to avoid calling attention to excessive height. Don't be ashamed, young Stephen Merchant. Good posture is merely the reflection of good body mechanics. And good body mechanics depend in large measure upon the intricately built axis of body movement, the spinal column. Ask your doctor if the spinal column is right for you. Side effects include back pain, muscle aches, and eventual death. The spinal column is the axis of the human structure. It makes possible the body's wonderful freedom of movement and helps to give us flexibility and strength. Not available in Ted Cruz. Ooh, pray that your spine is never as warped as this soundtrack. Thank you so much for watching Fun With Shorts. This series is supported by Patreon and patrons like these wonderful people right here. They get early access to new episodes and exclusive episodes every month. Also, check out the updated funwithshorts.com for DVDs and merch and all the good stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time.